Good morning, everybody. Welcome to He Set Me Free. My name is Robert, and this morning I want to talk about some of the traps that can lead you into depression and anxiety with Uber and Lyft, a false sense of security. If it's one thing that I know is you get used to the money being able to cash out at any given time. And they sell the idea that you are your own boss and you make your own hours. And that you have control. But in reality, you don't have control. They sell the idea that you're not work you're not following the rules of a normal workplace, which is true to a certain extent. But you have to play their game. Because if you don't, they can then it can subsequently affect your earnings. This is the unwritten rules. Oftentimes enough, you're forced to drive farther, have people in your car that are rude, obnoxious, disrespectful for a few measly shekels. And it can wear on you over time and it can make you jaded, bitter. There is freedom, make no mistake in doing ride share. And the money can be good. But oftentimes enough they, they sell this facade of a promise that's not actually there. And if you have if you're predisposed to certain kinds of addictions, doing rideshare will only enhance and could further push you in the direction of, of your predisposition. Oftentimes enough, whenever in the past, before I became a recovering alcoholic, if I had a bad day, if I had a good day, if I had a no day, I would find a reason to drink, but more specifically, I would have more bad days than good days. So therefore, I would always go to the store and I'd buy alcohol. This was a self-medication. This was me dealing with people that I typically would not even see. If I was to pass them on the streets, they would be invisible to me. These are people that I wouldn't even bother to look at in my rearview mirror. That they was nothing more than a transaction. And that's the way that you have to treat rideshare. These people are not your friends. They are merely a transaction. And once you can get to that point then life can become a little easier. Uber is nothing more than a form or Lyft, a form of a source of an income. It is not a job. There is no social skills. There's no skills whatsoever that is transferable to an actual employer with the exception of doing delivery, maybe non-emergency patient transportation, And companies that do actually do delivery of packages, which I will not name, they say that they encourage or look for Uber and Lyft drivers, and they do not, and they've done that. The only skill that Rideshare gives is how to deal with people just like you would in retail.
Because it's not like you can argue with the people and call a manager up and stand back. They are in your back seats and anything can happen. You can call and report, oftentimes like what I've done, and Uber will not, or Lyft, will not remove them off the platform. They'll just simply unpair you from them. So they will continue to be able to have rides with different drivers. And there will not be any recourse for their actions. So it leaves you feeling powerless. All you can do is give them a bad rating and try to move on with your day. But sometimes it's hard to move past that because the damage has already been done. It can eat at you. And then it puts a, a bad taste in your mouth because you take and you throw everybody into the same pot. And oftentimes enough, they all belong in the same pot. Because they are, they feel entitled. The people that I have the biggest problem with are under the age of 25. Actually, probably the age of 30 and below. Because this is the millennial generation where they've never known life without cell phones. Everything's been given in the palm of their hand. Society, in general, has told them that they can be and do and say whatever they want to without repercussion. That their voice matters. That they can be anything that they want to be. They get participation trophies. Most of them have never been truly disciplined or have no discipline in their life. They've never been told no. So therefore, whenever they get inside their car, inside of our cars, they bring this very same attitude with them. And I had a passenger the other day that wanted to stop. I said, not without an amendment to the pickup. He changed it and I dropped him off at QT down on New, on New Road and I left. He didn't like it. I didn't care. Because oftentimes enough you can spot these rides because they're discounted. They're not very long and you automatically know inside your head how much you're going to get paid. But they're wanting a free stop without being charged for it. And this is where you have to put your foot down. Because if you don't, it will eat at you. Sometimes you can spot a bad passenger before they get inside the car. And other times you will be shocked by who gets inside your car. That they'll be nice. They'll, you'll have a great conversation and move on about your life. But probably, probably about 60% of the time you will have a bad experience with passengers, especially if you work nights, and depending on your market. But this can wear on you over time. And before you know it, you become jaded. You will keep your car clean, spotless, but you will have passengers that will disrespect your property, eat inside your vehicle, spill things inside your vehicle and not say anything, Come in with dirty, muddy feet, not say anything, leave, and then you happen to look back, and a car that you literally just cleaned looks like you haven't done anything to it at all. So it puts a bad taste in your mouth. How do you overcome this? Take deep breaths. Maybe listen to some music. At the end of your day, maybe go work out. Sit down and watch binge TV like what I do to divert my thoughts someplace else. Start your word out, your day out by reading something inspirational like I do, the Word of God. Eat healthy. 
is a big one. I take smoothies out with me that I make with mixed berries and, and bananas and pineapple, spinach, kale, turmeric, and cinnamon. Almond milk or, or not almond milk, but coconut milk or walnut milk. Eat healthy will help, believe it or not. It's a great stressor, stress reducer. It makes you feel better. It feeds your body. Something that I have truly noticed doing rideshare is whenever I, I eat unhealthy, processed food heightens my stress. Sodas irritate my stomach, heightens my stress. High fats makes you feel heavy and tired and it can aggravate an already stressful situation. This is what I found. These are not calming foods. Drinking Fresh pressed juices help to get all those nutrients in your body. They give you energy. Caffeinated drinks bring you up and then you crash. They are full of sugar and empty calories. But by eating healthy and trying to live a healthy lifestyle while doing this stressful job can improve your mental outlook when you're on the roads and it can actually help with interacting with passengers. Now with that being said, sometimes you need help with antidepressants and anti-anxiety medicine, like in my case. Because of a lot of my issues in the past that wear on me day in and day out, things that I'm trying to overcome. Doing rideshare with Uber and Lyft can aggravate your problems. Nobody is perfect, but it helps. Doing ride share can bring out triggers with people that you're trying to get away from. Something will be said or somebody will look like someone from your past and you can be triggered. The mind is a, it's a mysterious thing. Your senses are heightened whenever someone gets inside your car. Maybe they're wearing a, a cologne or a perfume that reminds you of someone in your past and you can be triggered. Anxiety can kick in. Depression. Maybe a conversation you get drawn into. This is where meds can help. Can keep you from spiraling and can improve your day and keep you from going home and self-medicating whatever that self-medication is but I have found with the combination of eating healthy and taking an antidepressant anti-anxiety medication with my high blood pressure medicine has helped me to live a healthier life in recent weeks and days for that matter but also staying in the Word of God has helped me as well too. Because I see a lot of things that me personally I've raised up inside my life and they become idols. So I have to crush those idols and get rid of them out of my life and trust in the one and only God. But you will come across a lot of different people with a lot of different scenarios. Some are polite, friendly, some will tip, some will not. Oftentimes enough, they won't tip. Oftentimes enough, you will have bad experiences with people that could ruin your day. And, and it's hard to overcome that because you, you will hit a string of bad passengers. So as drivers, we have to find ways to overcome this and exercise can help, eating healthy can help, meditation, listening to calming music, reading. And as soon as you get home park and park the car, 
leave your problems at the door. Now, sometimes that's easier said than done because I've carried my problems and I would come home and drink excessively in the past. But now I come home and I sit down and I turn the TV on. I have a glass of tea or a glass of Kool-Aid. And I'll relax. But I always start my day with the Word of God. Always. Put on the full armor of God to withstand the wiles, the, the tricks, the schemes the tactics of the enemy. And oftentimes enough, our very passengers are sent to discourage us. That Uber or Lyft will get these pa- will get these rides and we know instantly, depending on the area, that it's not going to go the way that you hoped it would. Because you know these areas, if You've been working your markets long enough. And you can try everything in the world to avoid these areas. And to no avail, it does you no good. Because these platforms are designed to crush your spirits. To just make you conform. So that they can make money and you get paid shekels. But as drivers, you have to find ways to, even if you have a bad ride, log off for a few minutes, take a deep breath, breathe, maybe meditate, go for a walk for 20 minutes and get back on and try try again. Sometimes you just have to log off altogether and step away and say, you know what, I'll cut my losses. Tomorrow's a new day. But I'm telling you now, eating healthy helps. Take stuff with you. Healthy. I got I stopped off at Walmart yesterday and bought a bag of trail mix with this, which is nothing more than cranberries, walnuts, pecans, and almonds. Full of antioxidants. Brain food. Gives you energy. There is no sugar in it. There is no salt. It is plain. It is not sweetened except for the cranberries. And cranberries is extremely, it's a, it's a superfood. Taking a smoothie out with me of almond or walnuts or coconut milk with spinach, kale, fresh fruit in it, carrots, ginger, Turmeric, flaxseed, chase seed, cinnamon. These are all things that can boost your mood, feed your body, help with depression and anxiety, make you feel good. And help you to live a healthy life. Try juicing. Carry a a juice out with you or stop off at a grocery store and buy organic juices that are cold pressed that are that are packed full of nutrients that'll give you energy that will last. And you won't crash like drinking caffeinated drinks. The only caffeine I have is in the morning and maybe a cup or two in the evening to relax me. Iced tea. Try doing a a a smooth or a smoothie made of concentrated green tea with pineapple in it with turmeric little things like this can improve your mood and can lift your spirit but as drivers it is upon us to make the most out of a bad situation most of us do ride share because our bodies can't handle normal work anymore And we like the hours. We make decent money. The downside, the dark side, like the video that I posted yesterday is everything that I talked about. The depression, the anxiety, needing to pay bills, having to stay out on the roads longer, dealing with people that you don't 
want to deal with. Having strangers inside your car that you'd just rather keep on driving past them. Or that you don't want to ever encounter in your life. Having to hear conversations while they're talking on the phone that you wouldn't have with anybody. There's nothing more rude than someone FaceTiming inside my vehicle. It prevents me from being able to focus because human nature automatically steers to the direction of where the noise is coming from. It's a distraction. In a society where we have ear pods everywhere, there's no excuse for it. But some people don't just don't care. Have you ever been in the grocery store and the same thing happens? You're standing behind someone. You're trying to check out and go home. And someone can't put their phone down because they're FaceTiming. That's rude. It's obnoxious. It's inconsiderate. And it's on a whole new level of narcissism because they only care about themselves. It's like going to the convenience store and you're trying to grab something to drink and someone's standing there picking out scratchers. And there's a line of people behind them. They don't care about anybody but themselves. But yet, we as drivers, we're supposed to be considerate and give the best service possible whenever time in and time out our passengers are anything but that. They're disrespectful. They're raised in a me generation. And most of us are a lot older. Raised in a different time in a different era. Where being spanked and disciplined was a daily norm for most of us. Being grounded was something. And being told no. So, in the coming videos I will share things in my personal experiences with eating healthier. As soon as I can afford a pair of walking shoes, I will get out and start walking. and I will share how it makes me feel after maybe a stressful day or maybe I'm having a good day and I just felt like getting out and walking and, and how it made me feel. To release all that negative energy. But I hope this video has helped a few people out that you're beside yourself and you're looking for ways to alleviate the pressure. And I've given you a couple ideas to try eating healthier. Put down the fat, the fatty high, high carb meals and go for fruits and vegetables in a smoothie and a drink. When you come home and cook and cook dinner like yesterday for dinner, I had on multi-grain bread, <coughs> tuna fish with onion, egg, some Miracle Whip, and bread and butter pickles. With instead of chips, grapes. Alternative. It's all about smart choices. Maybe some carrot sticks or slivers or slices of bell pepper. Some fresh fruit of maybe pineapple, strawberries. Subtle changes like this to your to your diet can help you sleep at night because oftentimes enough too, we will carry these burdens with us to bed and it can create insomnia, make us toss and turn. And then you wake up tired. And if you don't get a good night's sleep, that can raise on you. A good night's sleep can raise, or a lack of a good night's sleep can raise your blood pressure. Make you irritable, anxiety, depression. <coughs> the research is there. By eating healthy, it can change and help you sleep at night. Start journaling. Write down about bad passengers and your experience and what you can do differently next time. Something you can also do too, keep an ear pod in an ear. That way your passenger can't see it and play music in it. That way you can block out what's ever going on because you can't listen to two things simultaneously. 
Listen over here so that you can't hear what's going on in your back seat. Just keep an eye back there. So, y'all have a blessed day. And until next time, may he set you free as well too.